What's up everyone? D Crack here, about to react to another video for you guys. And guys, it's been a long time since I've done a scary reaction. I'm about to react to Mr. Nightmare's new video. So like always guys, I'll have links to the original video down below. This says three true unsettling deep sea horror stories. And I'll be honest, the ocean, the deep sea, that's always kind of been a fear of mine. I've never really, I've never been actually out on the ocean or like on a cruise ship or anything like that. But, at, you know, watching the movie Titanic or anything like that, it's just. I couldn't imagine being like, you know, let's say you fall off a ship or somehow you get stranded at sea. You're just floating in the ocean miles deep, hundreds of feet deep. I mean, the ocean is really freaking deep, obviously. So the thought of just being like helpless and floating in the ocean. You get eaten by a shark or you drowned or it's just, I don't know. It just gives me an unsettling feeling, just like it says, unsettling deep sea horror stories. So I'm excited to check this out. Like I said, it's by Mr. Nightmare. So let's check out three true unsettling deep sea horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. When my dad passed away, not only did he pass along his fishing boat, but he also passed along his love of fishing to me. The boat is a Rodman 1250, which has a decent sized cabin, allowing me to go overnight deep sea fishing. I usually fish off the coast of Mississippi, and would sail for an hour out to sea, then stop and spend the rest of the day fishing. That's exactly what I did one Friday, taking my cousin Jack. I planned on spending the night and fishing most of Friday then sailing back. So after sailing out to sea for about an hour, I picked a spot for us to stop and cast our lines. We brought a radio and tons of beers to make the time more pleasant. The sun started to set and seemed- Did he say they traveled an hour? An hour out into the sea? That's... If I was going fishing, I wouldn't go... If I don't see land in the distance, I'm not going to go. I would go as far as I could still see land. The sun setting in the horizon with no visual intrusions was a beautiful sight. Perhaps the last pleasant thing that would happen that night. By the time the sky was completely dark, we had already packed our stuff for the night and were inside the cabin playing cards and eating burgers. Mid-conversation, Jack stopped me and told me to listen. There was the sound of a boat motor in the distance we left the cabin to look into the horizon but with is no it freaking pirates it's too dark to see more than maybe 50 feet in front of us but over the calm waves we did hear a boat motor whoever was out there didn't have their lights on the lights in my cabin were on which was definitely enough for anyone to see us and avoid hitting us we were expecting the sound of the other boat to sail away into the night however it seemed to circle us for a bit then abruptly stop the motor just cut, and there was nothing but the sound of the calm water splashing against the boat. Jack started acting a little paranoid. He thought we were being stalked. He wanted me to use the spotlight to look for where this boat could be. I didn't want to do that because that would be a bit obnoxious and obvious. To make him happy though, I started to drive the boat for a few minutes away from the last direction we heard that engine stop. Although, maybe I did it because I was a little suspicious about it as well. After a solid five minutes of driving the boat in the opposite direction, I killed the motor and we went back inside the cabin to resume playing cards. It felt like only seconds after we sat down, we heard it again. This time I heard it first, but it sounded like the motor was being given much less gas. We went outside again, and at that instant the sound stopped. This time I agreed with Jack, turning on the spotlight was a necessity now. The spotlight only rotated 180 degrees, so I turned the boat a little to the right so that I could point the light out in the direction we heard the boat. The beam of light shot far into the horizon. I felt my heart racing as I slowly turned the light to point more to the right. And Who's finally, out there? I when the light started to land on a boat floating not too far away from us. I turned the light off at once and told Jack to turn the cabin lights off as well. I put the boat in full throttle and sped away from the area. 
I steered the boat for about five to ten minutes before thinking it was enough. We hung out outside for a while to ensure we weren't followed again. When it seemed safe to do so, we went to sleep. However, I awoke to a thumping coming from above my head, above the cabin. I looked over at Jack, uh, sleeping on the A thumping? What? I whispered his name a few times to wake him up, and I pointed up at the ceiling. He looked up, then back at me, with a look on his face telling me he heard the thumps. I opened the door to the deck and ran outside, and saw two men, one on the bow of my boat, the other on a boat floating directly next to mine. Jack came running out behind me. Both of the men slowly put their hands up in front of their faces and claimed they meant no harm. The one on my boat said they were simply almost out of gas and needed help. He said he was going to knock on my cabin door to ask for assistance, but in my head I was thinking why was he on the bow of my boat then? I very low key like flicked Jack's thigh to indicate to him that I was getting ready to do something rash. The guy stepped down from the front of the boat to the lower deck, right in front of Jack and I. He was significantly taller and bigger than us. He looked at me for a few moments and reached out his hand, expecting a handshake, without saying anything. I knew something was about to go down with these guys, and for all I knew, I could start with my shaking his hand. Instead of shaking his hand, I pushed the guy overboard into the water with all my strength. Then I ran up the stairs to turn the boat on, while I yelled at Jack to make sure they didn't get back on the boat. We were able to- Okay, I understand that might be sca He pushed the guy overboard? What, is he just gonna let the guy drown? I mean, I know it's scary, but he pushed him overboard? What? To lose them in the night for good this time. I didn't stop though. I kept going the full two hours straight back to the shore. We made it back to my dock, and we slept on my boat that night. The next morning we packed up and drove home. Strange things can happen out at sea in the dark, but I never Dang, that's creepy. anything like that. I don't know what those guys were planning on doing to us on my boat, but considering they had been making a point of stalking us, I know it was nothing good. A few years ago, I went on a Norwegian cruise with a few friends. It started out as a great little vacation. However, by the third day- What did I tell you guys? I knew it. I knew I knew at some point a cruise ship would be in one of these stories. Someone probably fell- Someone probably fell off the freaking cruise ship. Hey, at sea, things started getting weird. After two days of eating constant sushi, I started to feel a little dizzy and lightheaded at times. My friends told me no more sushi, as it probably had something to do with that. But anyway- after a few drinks, I separated myself from my friends who were sitting in one of the ship's many bars and started walking back to my room because I really wasn't feeling too well. I took some weird lower deck route back in the direction of my room though, since some of the bars were on the lowest public levels of the ship. I asked one of the maids in the hallway which way was the quickest to get to the certain section my room was in. The maid had a very thick accent, but I understood her to have said keep going straight, then make a left at the sign. So I did that. I came to a sign that I don't remember what it said, but it was a sign, so I turned left. There I was in some narrow hall with a tiled floor instead of carpeting. It didn't seem like the right way to go at all. It seemed more like an employee's only section. Still, I figured I'd give it a chance before turning back and continued down this narrow hall. I came to a corner, then looked to my right and here was the creepiest hallway you could possibly find on this ship. Half the lights were out, one was flashing on and off, but at the end of this tiny hallway was someone standing facing the wall. My head started to hurt even more as I saw this. What? I had to rub my eyes to make sure what I was seeing was real, but when I moved my hands away from my eyes, the person standing by the wall was now looking at me. Considering they were standing in the dark section of this hallway not lit up by lights, I couldn't really see much about their actual face, other than I knew they were looking at me. I turned and went back the direction I came. I walked back down the hall. The maid was gone now, however. So he needs, to get, head still he needs to get out of that hallway. I managed to get back to the lobby of this floor, and at that point, finding the elevators was easy. 
I made it back to my room easily at that point and crashed into bed. I was sure I had gotten food poisoning from the sushi because my stomach was also hurting along with my head. But anyway, I woke up at some odd hour in the night and I couldn't move. The only thing I could move were my eyes. I tried looking around the room, but my inability to- Guys, I wonder if he was drugged. I wonder if somehow he was drugged and they were going to try to rob him. That maid pointed him in the wrong direction and someone was down there going to try to rob him of like his money or whatever. Move my head or sit in an upright position that made seeing a lot of the room difficult. Then I remember something seemed to appear in my peripheral vision. I turned my eyes to the opposite side of the room and there was a figure. A figure facing the wall. As I looked at it, I wanted to scream or run, but I couldn't do anything. It was as real Did someone as follow him in his room? I, I knew I was seeing it. Then the head of the figure turned around to face me, but all I saw was black. The body, the face, everything about this figure just looked black. The figure started to move closer to me. The most disturbing thing about it, though, was that as it moved towards me, it didn't move its limbs seemed to just slowly float towards me. The figure stopped over my bed, and now I could slightly see a face to it, and I is recognized it, it as that person I saw earlier in the night. Is it a, is it a freaking ghost? Is it a ghost? I don't remember exactly how long that figure stood over my bed, but suddenly I saw its mouth open twice as wide as you'd expect to be humanly possible, and out came a deafeningly real scream. So loud that I think it woke me up It's like a freaking ghost or a demon. The craziest thing I remember was the scream of this sleep paralysis figure fading into the scream of my own voice as I was finally able to make noise. I flicked on the light and my friend who was in the other bed woke up asking what's wrong. I told him about the horrible experience I just had. He once again said I'd been eating way too much raw fish and it was fucking with my head. My whole body was shaking and my voice was trembling. I went back to sleep and don't remember having another dream that night. But I still wonder if that person I saw in the hallway was real or not. Because I'm 90% sure that's the hallucination I had in my paralysis. That hallucination was also the realest, most horrific thing I'd ever seen. So he literally had sleep paralysis and there was some like ghost or demon that followed him in his freaking room. That's I creepy. on the east coast of United States. Recently I moved to Florida from Georgia. And I figured it would take a couple days to sail my boat down there to our new waterfront house. I didn't have any cars with a tow hitch to carry the boat, let alone a trailer to carry it with. So sailing it seemed like the best option, while my wife finished up moving the rest of the stuff to our new house. I kissed my family goodbye and set sail. None of them were really willing to come with me on this adventure, and I didn't blame them. But anyway, I brought enough food and gas to last me the whole trip. The first day was a breeze. I got some sleep, then sailed for 10 hours the next day, with breaks in between, of course. By nightfall, I went to bed in the cabin. Sleeping in a rocking boat isn't exactly the easiest thing to do, so I was up for hours, rolling around on my sides, trying to find a comfortable position, trying to press my head firmly enough into the pillow, thinking it would hide the unbearable feeling of the boat rocking over the ocean surface. Eventually, I heard sounds coming from above my head that I could best describe as small thumps. Did it sound like someone walking on my boat? I couldn't tell yet. With a medium-sized fishing boat floating out in the ocean, random sounds like creaks and thumps are going to be made. But these thumps were coming so rapidly and consistently, I started to get sick with the thought that someone out this far could be on my boat. I had to get out and look, but I wanted to be quiet. So I opened the cabin door very slowly, but before I could- What's up with people cre- What's up with people sneaking on other people's ships and boats? What the heck? Even open it all the way, I heard a big splash in the water. It sounded to me like someone or something jumped into the water. I was honestly scared I wasn't alone, even though it made no sense to me. I didn't want to go outside, but I felt I should move the boat away from whoever or whatever was out there in the water. So, I ran outside to the cockpit and started the boat engine. I gave the boat some gas and got myself the hell away from there. Immediately, I heard my boat bump into something in the water. 
Not something heavy enough to cause any kind of impact, but heavy enough to hear it and slightly feel the boat bump. I didn't see what it was because, to be honest, I wasn't paying attention to whatever was out in the water. Did he just run some? Did he just run somebody over? Anyway, I sailed for a few hours in the deep night because I was wide awake anyway. When I started to get tired, I killed the motor and went back to bed. Emphasis on the word bed, not sleep. Because even though I felt tired, I was still having trouble falling asleep. I figure half an hour passed and I started hearing more thumps. This time the thumps seemed louder and more clear for some reason. In a split second, my heart started racing again. The thumps were consistent and deliberate sounding again. No way it was just boat noises. I felt like I was being followed by someone. I couldn't just sit there and hide in the cabin like this all night. I had to sum up the courage to go outside again. But when I checked, there was no one on the entire boat. Was it my imagination? Were the sounds really just coming from the boat? I decided that must have been the case, and once again went back inside the cabin to bed. I lay there, extremely silent now, trying to listen for any little noise. And when I did this, I heard something. I knew I did. It wasn't the sound of thumping or anything like that. I had to perk up my ears to really pay attention, and I figured out what I was hearing. Oh. It wasn't the sound of the wind outside or oh. the water hitting the boat. It was the sound of someone breathing. It was not the sound of my breathing, but someone else's. It was coming from inside the cabin, of course. I panicked, but I tried to maintain composure so to not make it obvious. I got out from the bed, walked outside the cabin, and locked myself in the cockpit. I intended on sailing until I could find a dock by the shore. There's a small window that looks into the cockpit from the cabin. It has a curtain. I turned every minute or so at least once to look back at it, expecting to see someone watching me. And one of the times I looked back, I did see someone. The curtain was curved up a little bit in the corner, and I saw someone's eye, and maybe a quarter of their face peeking into the cockpit. I turned away right away, acting like I didn't see them. I had the thought, what if it was my young son trying to scare me? But it wouldn't make sense. I saw him waving goodbye when I set sail from the house. It was three or four tense hours of hell, thinking at any moment someone could break into the cockpit and stab me, but I made it to shore and sailed through the narrow canal. I had already called the cops 15 minutes earlier, requesting they have a few officers waiting at the dock I was headed to. It was still dark out, but I saw people standing on the dock, and I couldn't have been more excited to get there. When I stopped the boat next to the dock, I came out from the cockpit screaming at the officers to help, pointing at the cabin door. The two officers went into the cabin with their hands on their pistols. Let me guess. Later, Nobody's in there. It's a ghost. They pulled out some guy with really long gray wet hair. and a Oh, they did find someone. There was some dude. Oh my God. Similar beard, wearing wet skinny ripped jeans and a gray t-shirt. They had him in cuffs as they walked him past me. He looked at me and just laughed this insanely off-putting laugh. The guy looked and sounded like a meth head, the best way I could describe him. The police questioned him, but he never answered anything as to how or when he got on my boat, or what he was trying to do. But thinking back, when I heard breathing in my cabin, uh. it's likely he was hiding under my bed, and that's the most horrifying Under his imagine. bed? No! By then, I was exhausted. I went back to my cabin and fell asleep right away. By late morning, I made it to the new house and my nightmarish adventure was over. Dang, that's creepy as hell. Guys, all right, that was three true unsettling, unsettling deep sea horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. If you enjoyed this reaction, make sure and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, make sure and click the bell so you don't miss any new reactions. Guys, thanks for watching and until next time, Peace. Go.